Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're continuing our series on constructing graphs, looking at part two, drawing the scale. So firstly, we're going to look at what is the scale when we're looking at making or using a graph. We're then gonna look at what does a scale look like so we can visualize it. And then we're gonna look at how do we draw one? What are some tips and strategies that we need to do in order to make it appropriate and look the best that it can? We're also then gonna look at um, some aspects around scatter graphs and thinking about how we use scales in scatter graphs particularly. So let's start by looking at what is the scale? Well, when we're looking at the scale, we're looking at or essentially looking at how the boxes on the page relate to the values that we will be placing on them. That is, it's, it's the canvas on which we set up our graph. It establishes how we're gonna plot those points. It makes it clear and easy to read. And it also allows us to accurately and correctly plot those values. Okay, because once we've set, established our background or backdrop, that then we can place the data um, accurately and neatly in a way that is useful to the person making it and the person reading it. So what does a scale look like? Well, here's an example of a, of a 2D scale, rather than exactly what you might see all, all over a graph. But it looks and acts like a number line, like you might be familiar with from earlier on in your high school maths. Looking at this idea that we have this, this horizontal line where we've got neatly spaced intervals that have numbers written under them, that then we can go along and we can plot data points along based on what that number is. You know, so here we've got a scale that we've established that goes up by twos from zero all the way up to 24. We then have points that we plot at two, at five, eight, 14, and 20. Our, our scale allows us to easily find where those numbers are, and then we can see the gaps between them, we can see the pattern involved much more easily. Okay, so it's, in the, it's I can't emphasize enough how important a, a well-constructed scale is to interpreting your graph. It's the, the line between, um, you know, seeing the trend clearly and totally mucking it up. Okay, so a well-constructed scale is a real skill and it's something we're gonna look at now. So saying, all right, let's look at an example and I'll walk you through how that works. You know, say a student wants to put the following measurements onto a graph. They've got three, five, 10, 12, and 20. Okay, so at the moment we're, we're just focusing on what in one, so in, in one line, two dimensions. We're not looking at, all right, well, these are pairs of points. Okay, don't, don't get hung up on that yet. But so saying, all right, we've got an area of graph paper. How do we then um, you know, what are we going to draw on this to make it practical to do this? All right, so let's look at the first version the student might do. We write the numbers 3, 5, 10, 12, 20 on each of these kind of these medium boxes or this, these kind of slightly bolder lines. But your scale is what you put the data into. The scale, you don't write your data, your measurements as the scale. Okay, this is a really common mistake that people will make when they're doing a scale and it really mucks things up badly. Okay, because then the, the numbers that, you know, makes it look like they're evenly spread apart. It, you know, that whereas we can see from the gap between these numbers that they're not. Three, the difference between three and five is two, then five and 10 is five, and then two again, and then eight. But the way that this scale is written, it makes them look like they're evenly spread apart, which we know isn't how it is. So it's misleading to us. So don't do it this way. All right, so we say, all right, if the gaps needs to, uh, you know, shouldn't be uneven, then let's make sure that the gaps are even. Okay, so what we have here, we have a consistent scale going from zero and going up by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Fits our numbers, it'll be okay. But the problem is, how would you find seven? How would you find 10? How would you find 14? Okay, using this scale, that the, the boxes in between don't let you do that easily. And in writing the graph or reading the graph, you're gonna have an awfully hard time trying to interpret it. Each medium box should represent the numbers one, two, or five, or their multiples with 10. That is by far the easiest way for you to be able to get each little box counting for a meaningful number that allows you to work it out. Okay, so then you're able to actually then, you know, work out, all right, well, where will I find seven? Where will I find 10? Where will I find 14? Based on that scale. All right, so let's say we need to make sure that our medium boxes, you know, hit one of those numbers. Okay, yes, it's, this one's consistent. Zero, 10, 20. We're going up by tens each time. Yes, each medium box is worth one of those numbers. It's worth two. You know, each little one, because we've got five little breaks between zero and 10, each one counts for two. But the problem is, 
20 is the highest number we need to fit. It's going to be way too cramped if we use this scale. We're using a tiny amount of our area and we're going to waste the rest of it. Not only that, but it's going to mean that any trends and patterns we try to look at in this space is going to be too small. It's going to be too hard to draw, too hard to read. You've got to fill, use your scale to fill as much of the page or area as possible. Now, it needs to be go beyond the biggest number you're trying to write, okay? You, because it's got to be able to fit inside that area, but you want to use, stretch it out as much as you can practically do while hitting the other boxes, you know, and making sure it's consistent and the multiples are, are one, two, or five, or something with 10. Okay, so we need to spread it out more. So let's look at our fourth and final version that's taking into account each of these things. Okay, going from zero to 25. So let's look at what we talked about. Yes, it's consistent, tick. It goes up by fives each time. Okay, so it's nice and, and evenly spread out. Each medium box is worth one. Okay, so we're going up by ones in the little boxes in between, even though we don't need to write out each one. We, we can work that out, good. It uses the available space appropriately. We've spread it out nicely in this area. It's big enough to be able to fit our largest number, but it's, you know, we've, we've used the space as best we can. So this is the scale that is going to be the one we choose and use. Far more useful. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at scatter graphs. Thinking about, all right, we've looked at scales in two dimensions, but scatter graphs involve scales on both X and Y axes, as in you need two scales or one for each of them, because each one is, is a, a, a scale in which you're going to be plotting data. Okay, and so it's important that we create each scale separately based on the data for that axis, independent being on the x axis, dependent measured variable being on the y axis. So we're saying, okay, if I've got values going between 0 grams and 400 grams, then I need to make sure my scale will fit that. Okay, so I've gone a little bit beyond it, I've gone up to 450. We've got consistent um, amounts here of 50s in our, in our values, so it, it goes up consistently. We've used the space. Each medium box is worth, um, we, we've got little tens, okay, in for each of these medium boxes in 10 grams, so it's easy to read. And then we've done the same thing with our values on our y-axis going, all right, we've got to go from zero up to 20. We've gone a bit beyond that. Each, it's consistent. Each of our medium boxes counts for one, so we can work with it. So we've done each scale, each axis independently so that together that we get a really useful pattern and relationship that we can use. And it makes our graphing much easier. All right, so the idea being that we go across and we say, okay, this is a point at 50 grams added, and it was going up by, um, let me see on this, you know, it's going up by 2.5 centimeters. Sorry, just the angle of the screen as I'm recording, it's a bit faint. Okay, so we go across, we go up, we put a point. We go across to our next one, go up, put our point, and so on, and so on. All right, so we looked at what is the scale? What is it there for? It allows us to plot our points accurately, carefully, consistently, so we can see the relationships the best way. What does it look like? It looks and acts like a number line. So that nice, even, consistent spacing with the numbers that we need to place. We looked at the tips involved in drawing the scale, making sure we're using consistent gaps between them, making sure that our medium boxes are, are counting for useful numbers, one, two, five, or, or multiples of 10, and then looking at using the available space so that then it works in our favor. And looking at scatter graphs that involve two scales, one on the x-axis for our independent, one on the y-axis for our dependent variables. All right, thanks very much for watching. Make sure that you hang around for part three, which is looking at trends and relationships. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.